this video we're going to look at how to find the area under a graph. At GCSE level, to find the area under a graph, we consider the region beneath the graph, and we consider what shapes make it up, whether it's rectangles, triangles, trapezia, and we find the areas of those and add them all up. If the graph is a straight line graph, we'll be able to find the exact area. If there's any curves involved, what we find will be an estimate of the area. Just before we carry on, obviously we need to know how to find the area of these shapes. Rectangles, obviously length times width triangle, half the base times the height, and trapezium, I just want to have a look at it quickly. The area for trapezium is half, A plus B, which are the two parallel sides added together, and then times by the height. So in other words, to find the area for trapezium, you add together the two parallel sides, half it, and times by the height. Now, one thing to note is, whenever we find the area under a graph, quite often these trapezia uh, will be on their side like so, okay? And what we'll be doing is we'll be adding together the two parallel sides, which would be the two vertical lines, We'll be halving that and then timesing it by the height or the distance between those two parallel lines. Okay, so let's have a look at our first example. Our first example says here is a graph of y equals 4 minus x squared. And the question says calculate an estimate for the area uh, bound between the x axis and the curve. And I've marked that with the letter r. And we're to use four equal size strips. Now, since the graph goes from minus 2 to 2, well, that's going to go minus 2, 1, 0, sorry, minus two, minus one, zero, one, two. It's gonna be split quite nicely into four regions, okay? You've got region one, two, three, and four. And I've done that by just drawing vertical lines up at minus one, zero, and one, and then you've got the four regions. Now, it's quite difficult to find areas of these regions because this isn't quite a triangle, it's got a curve. Um, obviously, this is a curve as well. So what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna consider them as triangles and trapezia. So here you've got triangle one, uh, trapezium 2, trapezium 3, and triangle 4. And if we find the areas of these four different shapes, we'll get an, an, an area which is pretty close to the area of the whole um, region underneath the curve. You see we're leaving out tiny bits, um, but that's as close as we can get at GCSE level. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the areas of triangle 1, trapezium 2, trapezium 3, and triangle 4. Okay, so first of all, let's consider triangle 1. Now just remember that because the trapezia uh, the tra each trapezium has the two parallel sides and we're going to call this distance between them the height I'm going to call this distance of each triangle the height this distance the height and this distance the height and I'm going to call that the base and that the base in other words I'm going to sort of turn my head sideways and look at the triangles and work out the area that way okay just so that I'm using the same value for h the height for each of the four strips okay so triangle one so the area of the triangle is half the base times the height so the that's going to be given by a half times the base, well the base is going to be this length here, which is 3, times by the height, well that's the height of the triangle there, which is 1. A half times 3 times 1 will give us 1.5. Trapezium 2 now. So to find the area of trapezium 2, we're going to use the formula a half bracket a plus b times height, or the distance between the two parallel sides. So we're going to do a half bracket well, the two parallel sides, well, this one has a length of 3, and this one's got a length of 4. So it's going to be 3 plus 4, and then we're going to times it by the distance between the two parallel sides, which is 1. So we're going to do that. So 3 plus 4 is 7. Half of that, 3.5, times 1 is 3.5. Now, interestingly, this this curve has got a line of symmetry, um, that is the y-axis. So the area of 2 will be the same as area of 3, and the area of 1 will be the same as area of 4. Um, I'm just going to work out the areas just to show you anyway. Okay, so 3. Um, to find the area of this trapezium, again, it's going to be half the two parallel sides added together. So this time it's 4 plus 3. Um, 4 here and 3 there. So 4 plus 3 and then times the distance between the two parallel sides, which is 1. So that'll be 4 plus 3, which is 7. Half of that, 3.5 times 1, again, is 3.5. And finally, region 4, which is this triangle. Again, we're going to do half the base times the height. It's going to be half times the base. Again, we're looking at the base this way, so it's going to be 3 times 1. So 3 times 1, and that gives us 1.5. And when we add those all up together, we're going to get... 1.5 plus 3.5 plus 3.5 plus 1.5. And when we add those all up, we're gonna get five, five, and that's 10. So the area is 10 units squared. Because there are no measurements, because this is just an x, y axis, we'll just call this 10 as the area. Um, we'd, you know, you'd write 10 units squared. <coughs> 
Okay, let's have a look at example two. So example two says, below is a speed time graph of a car over 10 seconds. Part A, work out an estimate for the distance traveled by the car in the first nine seconds. I'm going to use three equal width strips, or three strips of equal width. And then we're going to answer, is the answer to A an overestimate or an underestimate of the actual distance traveled? Now, one thing to note is that this is a speed time graph. And if you've got a speed time graph, if you find the area underneath the curve or the, the, the lines that are there, that will give you the distance traveled. The reason is, if you were to find, for instance, if we had a rectangle, just say here, and we were to do two times whatever the height would be, just say 10, to get that area. We're timesing the time by the speed. And just remember, the distance equals speed times time. So if you times together the speed and the time, you're going to get the distance. So that's how the area underneath the curve of the, the graph is going to be the distance traveled. Okay, so part A. Let's cut it into three equal width strips. Now, the first nine seconds, well, that means we're going to put a line every three seconds, so three, six, nine, to give us three regions, like so. So we've got region one, which is a triangle, region two, which is a trapezium, and region three, which is also a trapezium. And what I've done is I've found the height of each of the lines drawn. So if the, the line at three has a height of five. So in other words, at three seconds, the curve was at five meters per second. At six seconds, it was traveling at 8.8 .8 meters per second. And at nine seconds, it was traveling at 10.8 meters per second. Okay, so let's find the area of triangle one. So triangle one, half the base times the height. Now again, because the trapezia are this are sort of sidewards. The, the height or the distance between them will be the three. So again, I'm gonna consider this being the height of the triangle. So I'm sort of looking at each one sidewards. So a half times the base, well the base is equal to five, and the height of it is three. So five times three is 15, and half of that is 7.5. So this one here is 7.5 meters, because if you do meters per second times seconds, it's gonna be in meters. Okay, trapezium number two. So that's gonna be a half bracket A plus B times the height. So half of the two parallel sides, well that's five and 8.8. .8. So five plus 8.8. .8. And we're gonna be timesing that by the distance between them, which is three. And when we do that, we're gonna do 5.5, .5, or sorry, five plus 8.8, .8, which will be equal to 13.8. And then we're going to times that by three and half it. So 13.8, I'll divide it by two first of all, and then I'll times it by three, and I've got 20.7. So that's 20.7 meters. So in this uh, region, uh, the car, or between three seconds and six seconds, the car traveled approximately 20.7 seconds. Remember, it's an approximation because, because the line doesn't quite sort of cover the whole area of the of the curve, okay, we've got this little bit here that we haven't found the area of. Okay, and three, the last trapezium, which is this one. So again, it's given by the formula half, the two parallel sides added together, so that's 8.8 .8 plus 10.8, .8. so 8.8 .8 plus 10.8, .8. and we're gonna times that by the distance between them, which is three. And when, we, and when we do that, we get an answer of 29.4 meters. So to get the total distance traveled by the car, we just need to work out, or an approximation for the total distance worked out, traveled by the car, we're gonna to add together the area of triangle one, of trapezium two, and of trapezium three, and we'll see what we get for the total area. So we're gonna do 7.5 uh, plus 20.7, plus 29.4, and when we add those together, it's equal to 57. 0.6 meters and that's the total distance traveled by the car or an approximation to it remember it's not quite right in fact this would be an underestimate because that actual red line is just slightly above our ships okay so if we go back to the question now um as you can see the part a says work out an estimate for the distance the car traveled in the first nine seconds so as we've worked out that is 57.6 meters so 57.6 meters and part B, is your answer to an overestimate or an underestimate of the actual distance traveled? Well, we've kind of already answered this. As you can see, the triangle, the trapezium, and the trapezium are all underneath that red line. So our area is just slightly under the actual area. So our answer is an underestimate. So part B, it is an underestimate. Okay, now sometimes the questions that we're given will have straight lines, which you know, can be a little bit nicer where we're not having to estimate things. 
Okay, so this question says, the graph shows the speed of an underground train between two underground stations. Calculate the distance between the two underground stations. So here we've got the speed, and it sets off from 0 meters per second, and after 30 seconds reaches speed of 40 meters per second. It travels at that speed until a total time of 120 seconds has gone, so for another 90 seconds. And then over the last 40 seconds, it slows back down to rest. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to split this up into shapes. We could do it as one trapezium. I don't know why, but I tend to just cut it up into triangles and rectangles. So one, two, and three. Okay, so to work out the areas of these, I'm going to do half the base times the height for one. So half the base times the height. So it's going to be half times the base. Again, I'm going to consider this to be the, uh, well, actually, it wouldn't really matter here because I've got no trapezium, so it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to do 30 times 40 and half it. So that's going to give us 600 meters for the sec, uh, for region one. For the next part of the journey, from 30 seconds to 90 seconds, well, that means, or, sorry, from 30 seconds to 120 seconds, well, that means it's 90 seconds in total there for that section of the journey. And so we're going to do length times width, so it's going to be 90 times 40, and that will give us 3,600 meters. And our last section of the journey is this triangle, and it's obviously a half the base times the height. So half the base, well, the base from 120 to 160 is 40, so half of 40 times the height, which is 40, which will give us 800 meters. And then we just need to add them up to get the total distance traveled. So that's going to be 600 plus 3,600 plus 800, which is going to give us uh, 4,200, 5,000 meters. So 5,000 meters or 5 kilometers. Okay. All right. And the last example. So our last example. This time what we've got is we've got a speed times graph, uh, speed time graph for a journey. Uh, but rather than tell us, tell us the speed, we've got the speed given as y. And it tells us that the car journey lasts 200 seconds. Well, we can see that from the graph. And it tells us the total distance traveled. So the total distance traveled is 3.12 kilometers. And we've got to work out the value of y. So what I'm going to do again is I'm going to split this up into the triangles and the rectangles. So we've got one, two, and three. And we're going to find the areas of these three and get them in terms of y to begin with. <clears throat> so uh, before we begin also, we know the distance is 3.12 kilometers. I'm going to change that into meters as 3,120 meters just because it's the speeds given in meters per second. Okay, firstly, region one. Well, again, it's a triangle, so it's going to be half the base times the height. So half the base, well, the base is 120, so it's going to be a half times 120 times the height, which is y. Half of 120 is 60, so the area of this section is 60y. Part two, we're going to work out the area of this rectangle. Well, this rectangle is 40 across, and it has got a, a height of y, so it's 40 times y. So 40 times y will give us 40y is the distance traveled here. And finally, to find the distance traveled in the last part of the journey, again, we're going to use there for triangle, so half the base times the height. So it's going to be half the base, so half times 40, and times the height, which is y, so y. So that's going to give us 20y when we work that out. So if we add all those up, we'll get the total distance traveled, because the total distance traveled is the area under this graph. So we're going to do 60y plus 40y plus 20y. And that total distance traveled equals 3,120 meters. So when we add that up, we get 120 y and that equals 3120 and when we do 3120 divided by 120 we get that's equal y equals 26 so this speed this uh, maximum speed traveled by the the car is 26 meters per second and that's what y equals y equals 26 meters per second and that's it so it's just to recap to find the effort uh, under a curve we may have to estimate it by using strips and cutting it up and working out the areas of each of those and adding them up or if it's a straight line one we might just have to work it out of you know split it up into the rectangles and triangles and trapezia and work out the areas of those and another thing <coughs> And another thing that the area under a speed time graph will be the distance uh, traveled.